right into our, our devotional hymn pretty shortly. Uh, a special appeal from uh, Mr. David Carollo, the ex executive director of the, of, the, of the Blue Army, and he's located here at the shrine. And he's, uh, he's writing this, he's, he's asking this, Dear friends of the Blue Army Shrine, the winter months are quiet and peaceful here at the shrine. I'm happy that we can offer mass and confessions year round, as this is the essence of our mission. Expenses, however, at high are high, and uh, our income drops off substantially at this time of year. In fact, we've operated at a deficit during these months. I'm asking anyone who can consider an additional financial gift to see us through this time. Uh, any help will be greatly appreciated. Thank you for your ongoing support of Our Lady's Shrine. God bless you, David M. Carollo. So do keep the, uh, the, uh, the apostolate in your prayers, as is in keeping with uh, uh, trust in God's divine providence. The most spectacular feats of asceticism mean nothing if they do not free us to offer true worship and obedience to God. Let us seek the real meaning of Lenten fasts and acts of penance. So let us uh, then, uh, with, with that admonition, consider fasting and our eternal hunger, uh, a reflection by Blessed John of Ruersbrook. He died in 1381. He has this to say. Here there begins an eternal hunger, which shall never more be satisfied. It is an inward craving and a hankering of the loving power and the created spirit after an uncreated good. And since the spirit longs for fruition and in and is invited and urged thereto by God, it must always desire its fulfillment. Behold, here there begins an eternal craving and continual yearning in eternal insatiableness. All such are the poorest of all people living, for they are avid and greedy, and their hunger is insatiable. Whatever they eat or drink, they shall never be satisfied, for this hunger is eternal. For a created vessel cannot contain an uncreated good. And hence there is here an eternal hungry craving without satisfaction. And God poured forth above all and yet say, staying it not. Here are great dishes of food and drink of which no one knows save he who tastes them. But full satisfaction in fruition is the dish which is lacking there. And therefore... This hunger is ever renewed. Yet in the touch, rivers of honey, full of all delights, flow forth. For the spirit tastes these riches in all the ways which it can conceive and apprehend. But all this is in a creaturely way and below God. And hence, there remains an eternal hunger and impatience. Though God gave uh, to such a man all the gifts which are possessed by all the saints and everything that he is able to give, but with, withheld himself, the, the gapping desire of the spirit would remain hungry and unsatisfied. The inward stirring and touching of God makes us hungry and yearning, for the spirit of God hunts our spirit, and the more it touches it, the greater our hunger and our craving. And this is the, uh, the life of God in its highest working, above reason and above understanding. For reason can here neither give nor take away from love. For our love is touched by the divine love. And as I understand it, here there can never more be separation from God. God's touch within us, for as much as we feel it, and our own loving craving, there are both the created and creaturely, and therefore they may grow and increase as long as we live. <clears throat> Blessed John of Ruysbrook, he was born near Brussels and he died in 1381. I took this from the Magnificat, beautiful reflections if you're able to have the Magnificat, great reflections for Lent. <clears throat> 